Hello everyone, this is Jason from Prime Time Aquatics and I am super excited to bring you a species profile of the black skirt tetra. A very common fish, a very hardy fish, and we're going to show it to you in a really cool tank. Hope you enjoyed the video. So I thought what better way to show you this really cool fish than using an awesome 3,000 gallon tank. This tank is from the Wonders of Wildlife Museum in Springfield, Missouri. And I cannot stress it enough, if you are ever in the area, you need to see this aquarium. I will put a video of a full tour that I did of the Wonders of Wildlife Museum. Really cool place. This is a great tank. It's going to show off these fish in a, in a way you don't normally get to see them. They are from South America. They're awesome. When you look at the internet and you look at what are the potential size of these fish, a lot of the sources say an inch and a half to two inches, and that's just not true. These fish were every bit three inches, and not only were they three inches, they were very thick bodied, as you're gonna see throughout this video. So we're gonna keep that in mind as we go through this species profile and really look at the optimal conditions for these fish. So this is not a small tetra. This is, I would consider this to be a medium sized tetra at three inches. Coloration you can see throughout the video. Males and females are basically the same. They've got that black fin towards the bottom and they tend to be a silvery tan and they have those darker vertical stripes. The females are going to be a little bit more rounded and you're also going to see throughout this video that there is in fact a long fin version. Now when it comes to the temperament, I would say that these fish are for the most part relatively peaceful. They can be a little bit fin nippy with longer fin fish and in fact that's probably why you're going to see some of the long fin varieties have a little bit of, of tail fin nipping going on there. But for the most part these are, are pretty docile, pretty peaceful fish. If you treat them right they're going to live every bit of five years. Now as we consider their size and we consider their temperament what kind of fish can we keep with them? What are the tank mates? And if you want more information on tank mates for these fish, check out the description below. I'll have a bunch of options for you. I wanted to show you this too. In this very tank, there were discus breeding in that tank and caring for eggs. I just thought that was cool. And right over there to the right, you see a Chinese algae eater just patiently waiting to see if those parents will go away so he can eat the eggs. So tank mates, I think you're good with other types of neons. Uh, other types of tetras like neons, glow light tetras would be good options. You could do cherry barbs and daniels and rainbow fish. Certainly most of the garamis will work just fine everywhere from our honey garami to our larger, more aggressive opalines, golds, and blue garamis. Most of your live bears are going to be fine. You'll have to keep a little bit an eye, a little bit of an eye on the longer fin male guppies just to make sure that's working out okay. But Mollies certainly, sword tails, platies would all potentially be options. Larger rasboras, like your brilliant green las rasboras, your pork chop rasboras might, might work just fine. If you wanted to keep them with cichlids, and we have done that a number of times in the past, you could look at Epistogramma and rams, Crebensis. We've kept them with larger cichlids like Severums and geophagus. We did keep them with angels without too many issues in terms of fin nipping, although you'd have to exercise some serious caution if you were going to do that. In the tank that you're looking at here, they're actually in with discus. You'll see bleeding heart tetras in this tank. You will also see a bunch of cardinal tetras, tetras swimming around, emperor tetras. There's quarry cats in here, which could be a great option. Loaches, like your clown loaches, your tiger loaches, that kind of thing. Otosynclus would work. It, I probably wouldn't put them with shrimp because I think your shrimp will mostly go missing as these fish approach full size. And I definitely would be very careful about putting them with bettas because again, those long fins might be a little bit too enticing for these fish. When we're keeping these fish, generally we're trying to achieve a temperature in the upper 70s. That's where we've had success keeping them. They can go higher, uh, certainly into the lower 80s for sure. They can go a little bit lower into the mid 70s, but ideally we like to keep them right around 78 degrees. Now what's cool is when it comes to the pH and water hardness, they're pretty adaptable. I've found that they do fine in our water, which has a pH of around 8 to 8.2. They'll go down to a pH of 6 without too many issues. Water hardness anywhere from 3 to 10 degrees in water hardness. Your water quality should be good. We should not have any ammonia. We should not have any nitrite in the tank. We should make sure our tank is fully cycled. If you don't know what that means, check out the video in the upper right hand corner. That will give you some more information about what it means to have good water quality for your fish. 
Feeding these fish is very easy to do. We have found that they will take to just about any flake food or small pellet. We feed our fish north fin flakes and they absolutely love it. They will eat frozen brine shrimp, frozen blood worms. Now, when it comes to the tank size, this is where I am going to probably differ from most of the sources on the internet that tell you anywhere from a 10 to a 20 gallon is gonna work just fine. I prefer to have these fish bare minimum. If I'm keeping these fish, I would want them in a 29 gallon. And here's the reason why. One, they need to be kept in groups. So minimum, in my opinion, six fish. You're looking at a fish that can absolutely achieve a three inch length and also be relatively wide bodied. Because of those factors, 29 gallon is my absolute minimum. I have historically kept them in 75 gallons, 125. So you don't need a tank that big, but definitely if you're less than 29 gallons, just know that they're not gonna probably achieve their full size and they're just not gonna have the space that they need to swim around. And when it comes to decorating the tank, you can see in this example what they've done. And so when it comes to substrate, it doesn't matter if it's gravel or sand, at least for these fish, because they don't interact with the substrate. So pick the one that you prefer. If you go a little bit lighter on the substrate, your fish are probably going to be a little bit, little bit lighter in color. In terms of other decorations, rocks and driftwood, if you've got your, you know, if you want to use plastic caves, plants, you'll see a lot of live plants throughout this video. We generally use live plants. You don't have to. The fake plastic plants are fine, but you do want to provide them some structure where they can feel secure, a place they can go if they don't want to be out and about. Now, one thing to consider though is you want to you do want to give them some swimming space now you're going to see throughout this video they do tend to shoal they do tend to stay together but i would not necessarily call this a schooling fish when we've had black touch black skirt tetras and the very close relative the white skirt tetra which pretty much looks the same only white they will definitely group up when they are scared or when they're excited but other than that you will often see groups of them kind of split off from one another so just kind of keep that in mind now if we want to breed these fish it can be done obviously you need a male and a female generally the easiest thing to do is put them in a 10 gallon with a spawning mop let them condition them with high protein foods they're going to do a big egg scattering event and then you've got to remove the adults because if you don't the adults are going to eat the fry the fry are going to be tiny and so at first they're going to need infusoria it's going to take two or three days for them to hatch after they do they're going to eat infusoria and then after a couple weeks usually they're going to be large enough to eat live baby brine shrimp the fry aren't that hard to raise you just have to make sure that the fry are not mixed in a community tank because if that happens most likely the fry are going to go missing but as you can see throughout this video, this is a great fish. It's a great beginner fish, partially because I think it is a relatively hardy fish that adapts to a wide range of water parameters. Just make sure those water parameters are in fact stable. But this is a great fish, not a ton of color, but a lot of personality, really cool body shape. If you have an opportunity to check them out, it can be a very rewarding fish to keep in a group. And once again, if you want more information on tank mates, check out the description below, as well as if you wanna see a whole lot more of this place, the Wonders of Wildlife Museum, I'm gonna put that video down there too. Really appreciate you being here, and we'll see you in the next one.